Hello everyone. I'd like to spend this episode not implementing anything new, but rather just making a few small improvements before we carry on with the series. So let's head over to the player class. And what I'd like to do first of all is just to remove all of the input from this class and move it to its own player input class. So uh, let's create a new c -sharp script and I'll call this player input. And up at the top here, let's add a require component attribute of type player. And then we're going to want to get a reference to the player script. So in the start method, we can say player is equal to get component of type player. All right, and then on the player script, we're going to want to have a public void method called something like set directional input, which takes in a vector two for the input. And then outside of the method, we want to create a vector two called our directional input. And inside of the method, we can just say that the directional input is equal to the input that we've been given. All right, so now we want to replace this input variable here with the directional input variable. So let's just rename it with command R to directional input. And then I'm going to cut this part out because we'll want that in our player input class. And we can then just delete this. And now everything is referring to the directional input variable up here. So if we save that, let's go into play input, and in the update method, let's just say vector2 directional input is equal to this line, and then, oops, let me just add my semicolon, so then player dot set directional input, and we pass in the directional input. All right, now if we go back to the player class, we can see that the other bit of input that we're doing is we're getting the jump button, both when it's pressed down and when it is released. So uh, to replace that, let's create two methods, a public void on jump input down, as well as a public void on jump input up. All right, and then we can just paste this code for jump input down into the on jump input down method, and likewise the code over here into the on jump input up. And we can then just delete these two input calls. All right, so uh, clearly we're going to need access to the wall sliding bool as well as the wall direction x integer inside of this method. So let's declare both of them up here bool wall sliding and int wall direction x. And then obviously we don't want to declare them again, so we can just remove int there and remove bool over here. All right, so now we'll want to call on jump input down and on jump input up from the player input. So let's save, and in here we can say if input dot get key down, key code dot space, then player dot on jump input down. And let's just copy that and paste it and change this to get key up, in which case we of course call on jump input up. Great, so let's go into Unity. And on the player object, we're going to want to add the player input class. And let's just quickly play this to make sure that everything is still working. And it does seem to be, we can still move around and jump. So what I'd like to do next is just to tidy up our update method a little bit. And we can do this by just uh, putting some of the code into methods. So uh, let's uh, just grab this velocity line over here and paste it up here. So we've got all of our velocity code together. And then if we just cut that out, and instead just call a method called calculate velocity. We can now create that method, void 
calculate velocity. And in there we can paste this stuff. And then let's also create a method called handle wall sliding. And we can call that immediately after we've calculated the velocity. So handle wall sliding. And if we just move this line down, we can then put all of this code over here pertaining to wall sliding into the handle wall sliding method. All right, so now our update method is looking much leaner and it's much easier to see exactly what's going on in this player class. Let's just quickly cut it out and paste it right up at the top here. Let's save and just make sure that we haven't inadvertently broken anything. So just play again and just hop around a little bit, make sure everything still seems to be working. All looks fine. So next, I'd just like to make two very small modifications to the controller 2D class. First of all, I'm not sure why I decided to use any vector threes in this class, since we never use the z-axis. So I'm just going to do a find and replace to replace vector three with vector two. The second thing is note the name velocity over here. Now we can see in the player class that when we call the move method, we're passing in velocity multiplied by time dot delta time. So once we actually get this value in the, uh, in the controller 2D class, it's no longer the velocity, but rather the amount that we want to move. So let's do a find and replace on velocity. And let's change this to something like move amount or delta move. Uh, I think I'll go for move amount. So let's replace all. All right. And if we save, obviously nothing's going to have changed uh, in the actual running of the game, but uh, that's just a little bit nicer now. To better illustrate the last thing that I want to change, I'm just going to come down to where we're drawing our debug rays, and I'm going to remove this multiplication by ray length, since that is making the ray very small and hard to see. And I'll just come down to the second ray and uh, remove the ray length from that as well. So if we press play, you can see that the number of horizontal and vertical rays is determined by the horizontal and vertical ray count of our controller 2D script, which is coming from the raycast controller uh, from which the controller 2D inherits. Now, this setup is a little bit annoying because if we change the size of any controller 2D object, be it the player or a moving platform, we're probably going to need to manually adjust the horizontal or vertical ray count because if we forget to do that, you can see that these are spaced much too far apart and this will cause the object to be able to move through other objects if the rays don't collide. So what would be better is instead of specifying the number of horizontal and vertical rays, just to specify how far apart we want the rays to be and for it to then calculate the number of rays needed from that. To make this alteration, let's head over to the Raycast controller class and let's create a new constant float and we can call this the distance between rays, and I'll set this by default equal to 0.25. We then don't need to give our horizontal or vertical ray count a value since we'll be calculating that from the distance between rays, and we also don't want those to show up in the inspector anymore, so let's add the hide in inspector attribute. Now, if we go down to our calculate ray spacing method, let's first say float bounds width is equal to bounds dot size dot x and float bounds height is equal to bounds dot size dot y. Now to calculate the horizontal ray count, we're going to want to see how many times our distance between rays value fits into the bounds height. 
Remember that horizontal rays are the ones that are being cast out horizontally from the object, which is why we're concerned with the height and not the width when we're calculating their spacing. So we'll say bounce height divided by the distance between rays, and we'll want to round that to the nearest integer. So let's use mathf.roundToInt and pass that into the method. And I want to do the same thing for vertical ray count. This should be equal to round to int of bounds width divided by the distance between rays. And if we save that, that should work. So going over into Unity, let's press play now. And we can see that it's automatically calculated the rays uh, 0.25 units apart. And our collisions work very nicely. Let's resize this back to its uh, default size. And we can see that the rays have adjusted. Let's also test this horizontally. So I'll just stretch it out a bit. And once again, it has performed the job admirably. All right, so that is everything for this episode. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cheers.